Switching to a smaller footprint, 60% mechanical keyboard was easily one of the better moves that I've done for my gaming setup. By removing those somewhat redundant and less used keys, you're able to gain a bit more room on your desk for more important things. And so with those benefits in mind, I wanna compare three different levels of 60% keyboards that you could kind of consider today at three different price points. We'll be comparing the $45 Moto Speed CK61, the Ducky 1 2 Mini, which you can find for around $100, and then the $350 custom build that I did a couple of months ago. And although these three keyboards are all 60% and have mechanical switches, they all deliver a very different typing experience. So let's take a look. So the point here isn't to find which of these three is the best because obviously that's going to be the much more expensive custom build. Instead, I want to show and explain the differences between them. Essentially, by spending more money, what do you get in return? Firstly, here's a quick overview of what we're looking at here. The Moto Speed CK61 represents one of the cheapest 60% mechanical keyboards that you can find on the market. Then we have the Ducky 1-2 Mini, which I personally think is one of the best 60% mechanical keyboards that you can currently buy at just $100. And the one that I've got here has Cherry MX red switches. Then there's my custom built 60% keyboard, which I've been using for a couple of months now and absolutely love. It's got an aluminium 60% case, lubed Telios V2 switches, and an SA Miami Knights keycap set. So the first thing that we should get out of the way is the difference in build quality and weight between these different keyboards, with the main point being that most off-the-shelf keyboards will have a plastic case, whereas with a custom build, you've got the option for a metal case. So both the Ducky and the CK61 have a plastic case, but I'd say the Ducky is just slightly more premium because it is just a little bit thicker. And there is actually one big benefit benefit of that plastic construction and that's portability. If you need to bring your keyboard with you in a backpack for example, the CK61 and Ducky are significantly lighter than a metal custom build which weighs over twice as much. All three of these keyboards have a Type-C connection and that's something that I wasn't really expecting to see on the $45 CK61. When it comes to the keycaps, this is an added level of customization for a custom build and an entirely separate category in itself. Really, this is truly a rabbit hole if I've ever seen one with tons of appealing and fun options. Just follow Teha Types on Twitch or YouTube and you'll see exactly what I mean. The Ducky 1 2 Mini uses double shot PBT keycaps, which feel great to type on. They've got a really nice smooth finish. The CK1 uses double shot ABS and feels a bit more textured. They also have surface printed function layers, which you can expect to wear out pretty quickly. Now let's talk about the switches. And I wanna start with the CK61 because the switches on this budget board aren't too bad at all. I chose the Kale Box white switches, which I just wasn't expecting to be this good at this price point. But the thing I like about them is that they don't feel too scratchy, which I personally find a lot of off the shelf tactile switches do tend to feel like. These have what's known as a click bar. So there's a physical bar which clicks inside the switch when you press the stem down. Do note the tactile click is pretty audible though, making this a fairly loud keyboard, but I do appreciate that the switches themselves are relatively smooth for this price point. I went with the Cherry MX Reds on the Ducky 1 2 Mini, which are just about the most popular mechanical keyboard switch in the world. It's basically the vanilla ice cream of linear switches. They're going to be smooth enough for most users, but coming from a custom build, these do feel slightly scratchy. That in my opinion is easily forgiven though when we take a look at how good the stabilizers on this Ducky 1-2 Mini are. I was personally a bit blown away here because this is the first off the shelf keyboard that I've used where the stabilizers didn't feel like absolute trash. I mean, you do have that pretty harsh click but the stabilizers themselves aren't, you know, rattly that you'd find on something quite a bit cheaper or even more expensive, like from Corsair or Razer, for example. So 
The stabilizers on Ducky 1 Too Mini is easily what I would say makes it worth the $100. The stabilizers on my custom build are clipped and lubed, so they without a doubt sound and feel a bit smoother, and particularly the bottoming out isn't as harsh, but again, I'd be more than happy typing full time on the Ducky. And that brings us to the biggest drawback of the budget CK61. The stabilizers here are really pretty bad, but you can't complain too much at this price point. To access the arrow key on the CK61, you can either press FN plus three to access the arrow keys at the bottom right, or FN plus four to access the keys at the top left. The ducky is quite a bit easier. You just need to hold down that function key and that will give you access to your full function layer, including those arrow keys. With a custom build, depending on what PCB you go with, you can program a function layer to do the exact same thing if you want, or just choose a PCB layer with the arrow keys built in, like I have here. Now I want to come back to the discussion of switches because this is one of the biggest advantages of building something custom. It's that you've now got a huge range of switch options that most would agree feel and sound quite a bit better than what you'll find on off the shelf keyboards. You've also got the option to lubricate the switches before soldering them to the PCB or plugging them in if you're using a hot swap PCB and that can make them feel a bit smoother and more buttery to type on. So here's a full typing comparison between all three. So for most of you watching this, I do think the Ducky 1 to Mini is definitely the way to go. For $100, you're getting a keyboard with some really solid stabilizers. Switches are going to be good enough for most people. And for those wondering, yes, I do consider this better than the Ann Pro 2. Beyond this, a custom build will set you back a lot more money. And let's not forget that you also need the tools at hand to assemble it. That's not to say that custom builds aren't worth it though. I regret absolutely nothing with my build to try and get the best typing experience that I can. If you are someone who uses a keyboard for a significant portion of your day, a $350 to $500 custom keyboard isn't actually that bad when you can consider how much it gets used. Not to mention if it makes your workflow a bit more efficient and more enjoyable. And I can also appreciate custom mechanical keyboards as a legitimate hobby and something to get excited about, although it can look a bit pretentious from the outside. At the end of the day, a keyboard is a tool for you to complete whatever it is that you do, and good tools make for better experiences. That's pretty much universal. On the other end of the spectrum, a $45 CK61 is totally viable. Sure, the stabilizers aren't good at all, but they're pretty comparable to a lot of popular keyboards that are out there on the market. If I was on a super tight budget, the CK61 would be my first pick, but maybe with some quieter linear switches. So hopefully that helps you guys out if you are looking for a new CK61. 60% mechanical keyboard or maybe considering building something from the ground up on your own. Hopefully now you can kind of weigh up the pros and cons and maybe weigh up if the benefits of a full custom board is really going to be worth it for you over something like a premium option like a Ducky 1 2 Mini. If you are interested, the links will be down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.